out of your life right now, what would be left? Nothing. Time is life. Time is one of the most powerful resources on this planet. I'm serious. Time. It's a huge resource. So I'll tell you that first, from a cultural standpoint, any culture that does not value time never makes progress. Because time is a very valuable resource. It's even more valuable than money. You can save money. You cannot save time. You can make more money. You cannot make more time. Once time is gone, it is irrecoverable. But the powerful thing about time is that it is convertible. It's a convertible resource. So time can be converted to money. Time can be converted to love. You spend time with your wife, spend time with your husband, spend time with your child. With the pandemic, is forcing many of us to do. Ooh, you're converting it to love. Right now, by attending this webinar, you are converting time to wisdom. See, to an upgrade in your thinking. And because your thoughts will literally attract their material equivalent into your life, you are upgrading your life. So you can't save time. What you convert time into is what you have to keep. Oh, yes, I've had some men tell me that their kids are happy, <laughs> that for the first time ever, they're seeing them at home from morning till night. The kids can't believe it. And then the next day, that is still there. Wow. Oh, yeah. So when we procrastinate, we waste time, we waste opportunities, and that's literally wasting life. Next, we procrastinate, we fail in keeping promises, right? Yes. Next, and then we consistently fail in keeping promises. We fail here, fail there. We can't even do the job well because we can't deliver on our job. It will hurt our reputation. And when you have people say, saying negative things about us all the time, we're failing and achieving goals, then it begins to hurt our self-esteem. It will drive your self-esteem low. And then it will ultimately hurt your career, your job, or even your health. You see small signs somewhere, something is going wrong. You don't attend to them on time. They become big problems. But then, it's not all bad news about procrastination. Procrastination has some benefits. See, <laughs> I don't like to look at things from only one angle, one viewpoint. How Any, any advantages to delaying in taking action? Oh, yes, you have more time to think things through and to get creative ideas sometimes. Now, sometimes you don't have the luxury of time. But some other times, it's not on the immediate, so you put off making a decision. You have time to gather facts. You have time to think things through. Next, you are delivered from the tyranny of things that are urgent but not important. Mm -mm. Some things are urgent. You know, they pull on you. Like you got to, you got to do something now. You got to act now. You got to do something now. But they're not important. Ah, I'll tell you, those things distract us from doing the things that are important. Not all phone calls are important. I'm sure you know. But all phone calls sound urgent because you know the call. Is going to ring out. Now the call is going to ring out. So it's like, hey, 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 it's about to go. It's about to. Until later. That's if there's time. The world won't crash if you don't do them. Okay? Deliberate procrastination helps you to handle worry while giving you health benefits, <laughs> okay? Deliberate procrastination helps you to handle worry well, sorry, for 
Yeah, the punctuation mark there. Deliberate procrastination helps you to handle worry well, giving you health benefits. Oh, yeah? It can wait. <laughs> it can wait. It's amazing how sometimes things that are not very important cause us to worry and to be anxious. And you know what? You are secreting your... You're making your glands to secrete bad hormones, destructive hormones into your system when you worry. Procrastination gives you the space to reflect on your values and to prioritize. I'm serious. Sometimes you have to make a choice, not between one bad thing and one good thing, but between two very good things. What dictates your choice, your values, your standards, your principles that you have adopted as a person, the things that are most important to you, because you rank things in order of importance. Those are your values. So when you're being rushed, when you're doing things in a hurry, sometimes you don't have the time to clarify. But when you have some space, you can reflect and then decide, this is more important to me than that one. Deliberate procrastination allows you to take on smaller tasks first and to have a sense of accomplishment. Sometimes you just you need motivation because what you're confronting seems big. <laughs> okay, so you can keep the big one. And do some small ones to gain um, some momentum and some encouragement, right? I don't advise all the time that you should do the easy things first, though. I usually advise you should do the hard things first, but sometimes it does help to do the easy one first. So how I overcame procrastination. <sighs> I reprogrammed my mind. I reprogrammed my mind. You are literally what you think. And we human beings are creatures of habits. We humans are creatures of habits. Oh, that's one of the causes uh, that I created some time ago. You know, how to cultivate habits and to put your life on autopilot. But I'll talk about those causes later. So we humans are creatures of habits. And whatever is habit becomes second nature. You don't even have to think about it before you do it. The place where you start is your mind. It's the place your mind works. It's the thoughts, you, you know, leave it till later is a thought. It's an idea. Okay, so um, this was what I discovered about myself. We, we, we have different kinds of personalities. Some people are extroverts, some people are introverts. Okay, extroverts are stimulated by the environment and other people. Introverts are stimulated by their thoughts and by their inner world, okay? I happen to be in the category of those that thrive on thinking, thrive on knowledge, on information, on dreaming, on imagination. So my strength is in thinking. My strength is in planning. How many people know A weakness, most of the time, is a strength that is carried too far. i say that again. A lot of the time, a weakness is a strength that is carried too far. Okay, let's say you're an extrovert and talking is your strength. You don't even have, it doesn't cost you anything. It's the easiest thing in the world for you to express yourself. Now, if you talk too much and you never listen, the talking has become a weakness. Okay, so switch it over and I fall on the other side. My strength is in my mind. It's in the imagination. It's in acquiring knowledge, processing it, arranging it, <laughs> you know. Too much thinking and not talking can be a problem. So in this instance, I found out too much planning had become a problem. Planning. Planning. <laughs> I'm sure you 
know a lot of people who talk a lot about what they're, they're planning to do, right? I'm planning to, I'm planning to. Sometimes somebody can say they're planning to do something for three years. Planning to, I'm planning to. But I found out the world does not reward you for, to, for what you are planning to do, but for what you have done. <laughs> so I found out that it, it takes me a lot of energy to overcome inertia. So I cannot blame myself for my strengths. I did not design myself. In fact, the thinking is a talent for me. It's a gift. What I then realized was, look, I will remain a hugely successful person in the thinking world, in the invisible world. No tangible achievement here. I, I, this was now a matter of life and death, you know. I, my destiny was at stake. I had to add the habit of taking action. But it had to start from my mind. So you know what I did? I took plain sheets of paper and began to write, do it now, do it now. I wrote it 1,000 times. 1,000 times. As I was writing it, I was saying it, do it now, 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 do it now. I did it so much, it entered my system so to the extent that today, now this was many years ago, till today, when I'm beginning to slow down and to think, yeah, maybe I'll do it later, do it now just springs out <laughs> at me. I have to start from there. Do it now. Do it now. I reprogrammed my mind. Let me add something here that may also be very useful to you as you. I reprogram your thinking. And why I really, really appreciate your being a part of this webinar. There are different kinds of knowledge. The kind of knowledge that you get can determine whether you will be motivated to take action or not. If the knowledge you get is theoretical, I mean, the person that is sharing the knowledge with you has not done it. The likelihood is that you will know it, but you may not do it. The knowledge that is acquired by doing usually comes with the motivation to do. Okay, so when I began, therefore, to get mentors, when I began to read books from people that have achieved what I want to achieve, it began to make a lot of difference for me. The second thing, I began to associate with action-oriented people. This sounds simple, but it's big. Association is powerful. Association is powerful. When I discovered the power of association many years ago, and in fact read you know, in books, that if you really want to get a picture of your life, you should just write the names of the people that are closest to you. Somebody said five, another person said seven. So I'll say, if you've never done it before, do it today. Write the names of the seven people closest to you. If you're married, your spouse first. If you have children, just write children, okay? Don't give them more than one space. Then fill up the remaining spaces when you're done. Take a good look at that list. You're looking at your future. Right there on that list. I'm sure the law of association is so powerful. It's equivalent to that. Just take a look at the list. Your life is not likely to be better than the quality of the lives of the people on the list. So I'm not asking you to throw everybody in your life away. But I'm just saying you change one name on the list, it can change the trajectory of your life. Literally change your status. Anyway, that's not the focus of our discussion today. But what I did, how it helped me in terms of procrastination, was then I ensure that I have extroverts around me. People that are spontaneous, people that are action-oriented. For example, my wife, 
is action oriented you know before you are done talking about it let's do it let's go <laughs> spontaneous okay um you know there's a reason why nobody has everything on this planet i believe that the creator did not create a replacement for himself okay so you find out we have to work in association with other people in order to bring out the best in ourselves and in them teams are powerful okay so uh i have mentors that are action oriented i remember my former boss you know action oriented and i'll never forget the day we had a meeting and right after the meeting you know we were still in the room greeting one another then i met him greeted him and he said eh hey, mister so how far with that thing i said what he said what we discussed at the meeting i said sir we just ended the meeting <laughs> we just ended the meeting he said exactly yeah, I said, so, sir, I'm not at any time we're still greeting one another. He said, no, 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 I'm just trying to get you to know. The moment we decide on what to do, the time is counting. The job has begun. I said, okay, sir, we're on it. <laughs> you see that? So when you, when you associate, when you are the kind of a person that has a tendency to procrastinate, but then you're connected with people that are action-oriented, they can stop you. And, and ask you, so how far have you gone with it? Okay, let's do it now. So when they see that you're beginning to get lost in your dream world, they can drag you back to reality, okay? Dream in the night. During the day, wake up and carry out your dreams. I developed new habits. I developed new habits. This is important. Ultimately, ultimately, we're creatures of habit. Success is a habit. Being successful is a habit. Being a failure is a habit. It's a way of life. You won't change the action till you change your mindset. That's where we started from on point number one. Okay? You've got to change. And listen, to change your thinking, you've got to to change your belief system. You have to stop justifying yourself. You have to stop giving excuses. You have to stop blaming other people or blaming circumstances. You take responsibility. It's up to me to do something about this. I'm going to do it. So the point then is that when you shift your thinking, then you shift your actions. When you do something consistently for at least 21 days, it becomes a second nature to you. So cultivating new habits over and over again, cultivating new habits, that's what succeeding is about. That's what it means to change your life. You cultivate new habits. Okay? You cultivate new habits. You do... Take driving, for example. You see? When you start, if you drive, if you know how to drive a car, when you started, the first, you didn't jump, jump into the car and drive smoothly the first time you did it. You know, my dad had this book on driving. I had read it from start to finish many times, long before he taught me how to drive. I'm serious. I had gotten all the sequences in my mind. I was so sure that the first day that I handled the car, I'll just take off smoothly. Sorry, it was not so. <laughs> so my dad took me to the driving range, start the car, okay, put it in gear. It was manual gear then. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Even though he had told me exactly what to do, I started the car, put it in gear one, let it go, press the accelerator. The car moved forward a little bit, jacked, jacked. I was afraid and stopped. Sorry. Practice is different from theory. <laughs> so, but that was then. As I did it again and again and again and again, it became habit. Driving for me is habit. I don't even think about it. I think about other things when I'm driving. I don't think about the driving. You've got to cultivate new habits. So being successful is like that. Sincerely speaking, you cultivate.
cultivate new habits. So here, I cultivated the habit of doing it. Habit of being action-oriented. Combining thinking with doing. Powerful combination. I'm telling you, powerful combination. So, uh, like I said earlier on, uh, we have the course and our team will give you the link to that if you want uh, as we go on in the chat room um, and and we would even give some of us the opportunity of getting some of the courses we've done before but i did one on how to cultivate habits and to put your life or your success on autopilot i developed new habits so whatever decision you are making today as we discuss just decide you're going to do those things consistently again and again and again for the next 21 days now if you've been doing something for 21 years or 30 years or 40 or 50 sometimes the 21 days doesn't do it so you've got to do something new every day for at least 21 days you may need to do for 30 you may need to do it for 60 what do you have to lose so this is why you should not go through this journey of being transformed, of becoming more effective in life, don't go through this journey alone. You know, I have discovered the power in mentoring, the power in coaching. I am serious. When you don't know how to do something, you don't know how to do it. And it can be very confusing to you. And you know where the problem always starts from? Our thinking. And most people don't realize that. You cannot rise beyond the quality of your thoughts. So back to that list that I was talking about. I decided my list must always have people that have succeeded more than I have. People that have achieved what I want to achieve. Okay? So I have mentors. When I want to start something, I discuss with my mentor. I ask a mentor, what do you think about this? And I can't forget the day I was telling my mentor about an event that I ran and how I had a guest speaker, you know. So my mentor said to me, that was fantastic, that was great. He said, but I should let you know that what you're building will not outgrow you. He said, I hope you know that. Yes, you can bring guest speakers to attract a crowd. He said, but when the guest speaker is gone, your guest members will also be gone. Then he asked, why don't you become the person that people want to listen to? That is one of the most profound questions anybody ever asked me in my life. Why don't you become? He didn't say, why don't you do this or do that? In goals, you're not succeeding. It's like playing soccer or football on a field. Like in Africa, we call it football. In North America, we call it soccer. Um, so you're playing football or soccer, but there's no goalpost. It doesn't matter how talented the players may be, how powerful the club may be, how experienced the manager may be. Nobody's going to win the match. There's even no point. We know the results before the kickoff. It's 0-0. Zero, zero. Okay? It will not matter the direction in which you kick the ball. Nobody's going to score. There will be no joy, no celebration. You've got to have goals. But it's not enough to have goals, you've got to achieve them. And to do that, you've got to beat procrastination. So we discussed some of the disadvantages of procrastination. We discussed, you know, sometimes it can have benefits, some benefits, but that will be deliberate procrastination. And then I shared with you what I did. The first thing, which makes our discussion today very important, changing one's thinking. Changing one's thinking. Okay. And then we talked about the need to associate with action-oriented people. 
Some you will associate with physically, some you will associate with virtually, like we're doing now. Some you will associate with through their products, through their books, you know, or their audios or videos. And then it is up to you to try to try something new, you know, that will add value to your life. Try a practice for at least 21 days. Then it becomes a habit. Okay, I reprogrammed my mind. I began to associate with action-oriented people. I developed new habits. Check in time. Is this all helpful for you? Give me a yes, if so. I, I really hope this helps, okay? I really, I really, really hope this helps somebody. So what did you learn today? How to beat procrastination and to achieve your goals daily. So what if you could take these same strategies and learn to apply them to your life right now? Would that make a difference for you? Do you want to hear how I can be of help? Please type a yes in the chat. You know why? I know a whole lot more than I've said, but we have very limited time. Okay? If you'd like to have a clear roadmap, and accountability for creating a life of opportunities we can discuss further. Let me tell you something about accountability. Human nature is weak. But when you have someone to ask you, so what are you planning to do? You say it. You have someone to ask you, so how far have you gone with it? Okay? You are accountable to somebody. That is what enables growth. There are many people that can pull themselves up like that without anyone checking on how they're doing so if you like to build a goal plan for your life have access to me and my team with additional training i want us to talk okay <clears throat> so in the 25 years that i have had the opportunity to teach people the principles for success through success power i noticed some shortcoming you know teaching thousands of people the same thing at the same time. And listen, I've been on so many radio stations. I've been on so many TV stations. Uh, I was on, I've been on national TV in Gambia, for example. Yeah, I, I walked into a shop in London. And I mean, there was another shopper, a lady that came to me and said, Excuse me, are you Sam? <laughs> Sam, are they hear me? They were, oh, I'm from Gambia. I watch you on TV in Gambia. And then I'm walking through Heathrow, and then there's another lady there, you know, one of the staff <clears throat> at one of the shops, and the same thing from Gambia. So I've been teaching, but I'll tell you, teaching the same thing to thousands and thousands of people at the same time is like you make a shirt that is one size, and you give it to thousands of people to put on. For some people, it will fit. For some people, it will be too tight. For some, it will be too large. That's where mentoring and coaching then 